Howdy, this is Rick Koppel coming at you from Denver, Colorado with another episode of Not Only Screw Guy. Today we have a special treat for you. I hope it's a special treat for you. And uh, yeah, we've got my raspberry pie that came in today. Yay! Another pewter. Yeah! So anyway, we have my computer. It only cost $107 too. At least the computer part did. Okay, so I have to connect. The only thing that comes with is the keyboard, so you have to connect up a monitor to it. And we have my uh, operating system now ready to go. Now, the interesting thing about a Pi, the operating system is all kept on this microchip card. A little bitty card like this. We need cards. Can you pretty easily put in cameras and phones and stuff like that? SD cards. Now I wanted to get now it comes with a 16 gigabyte SD card with the operating system already pre-installed on it, that kind of thing. I had my own operating system wanted to try on it. As well as uh, I think maybe I wanted more room than 16 gigabyte. I mean, that's how much memory this framework has. So you think you'd have more memory and stuff than that, you know, on, on your card. So I got a one terabyte. This has one terabyte on it. One terabyte on this little bitty card. So yeah, so this micro SD card has one terabyte of space on it. So I've got about a terabyte of space uh, to uh, store stuff on it too. So yeah, so that's cool. So anyway. We'll plug her in. See what we got. We first we had to unbox the video. The unbox video. First we had to unbox the pie first. And what I got was I'll show what I got exactly what I got in a minute. It's not exactly a pie four, it's a pie four hundred. We'll explain what that means in a minute. But here we want to show you first before we what our setup is currently on the system to do that. I'm gonna take the camera, I'm gonna move it around so you might don't go ahead too seasick or nothing like that hopefully especially my shaky parkinson symptoms sometimes all right here we have my framework laptop yeah you can see you're going into affinity there ah, so yeah it's it's a it's got an i5 11th generation i5 processor in it and uh it's what powers everything that I do over here, pretty much. Now the computer I used to have is over here. It's a uh, Acer Aspire, and uh, it's it's a good computer. It's got a Radon, or AMD Ryzen three, Radon graphic card in it, and uh, yeah, so it's it. It did pretty good for me. It did good. It's got KDE MX Linux, KDE installed on it. Yeah, that's nice. I also have two monitors attached to this one. This one up here and this one down here. Mm, space, I like space, yeah. Figure that part out pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, these are all 1080 monitors here. Now, this, fr this framework monitor is kind of a bit different shape, so I have to do some nagling with the. Uh, OBS, that's why I have the lines on some of these now. Since the camera does 1080, I can set the base resolution this to 1080. It works okay for this, but, uh, but yeah. So, and then I have on here is third computer's desktop. This uh, computer over here now, this is the one that I also bought for $100, believe it or not. The refurb. And it was a hundred dollars, and it's got yeah I don't have it on right now, but it's got a open source on it. This one has this framework has MX Linux on it. On it, see up there. You can see the MX Linux logo in the menu up here. So yeah, this one over here has a uh, open source on it right now. It's I called my testing desktop in a while. For, for most of my period time period. But yeah, and it's got this monitor. This one we'll be using for for uh, recording our stuff on. 
what, what will when we what, uh, yeah I'll use it to put my uh, raspberry pie on so yeah do that so this is my first raspberry pie I've ever had and uh, this one has a one of three gigahertz processors 3.0 I think I only have a couple of of threads in it so this and this this framework has eight and this uh ace row here has like about four i think if i remember correctly i'll right, put you back here and, and so i don't be so motion sickness hopefully that's better for you all right so now we're going to look at the pie now what now what you normally have is pi fours. Pi four is just a a piece of motherboard, <laughs> a little frame about yay big, and it's got stuff on it. So you can plug things into it, and you have to get a case for it. If you want a case for it, that kind of thing. It's a good idea to have a case for it. A pi four hundred is a little bit different. For a pi four, you have to plug a keyboard into and everything. Pi 400 is a keyboard and it has a Pi 4 in it. Pi 400. Here's the box. I haven't even opened it up yet. Uh, yeah, Pi 400. Raspberry Pi 400. Personal computer. Yeah, so you have to install specific, specific OS's on there. You have to install ARM OS's. So you've seen those right recently, that's for sure. We'll see if we can get into this thing if I remember how to open it up. I think. Slide this out like that. Then. Open this. There she blows. This is the only, that's the only thing in here is this little uh, keyboard. Yeah, and it feels nice. It's not no cherry mechanical keyboard, but it's pretty pretty nice. As good as these other keyboards, I guess. We'll get more experience on that in a minute. So the only difference here mainly is that whereas these have a Windows keyboard, Windows key, meta key, super keys has a picture of window on it. This bad as a picture of a raspberry on it. Yeah, so we'll see what, what it does. Yeah. And you get nowhere. Yeah, it's pretty close, similar to the keyboard on this uh matter of fact, it's about the same size as width wise as with my framework. <laughs> Which has a similar size keyboard on it. And it says it comes with a with a deal with a, a micro SD card. Probably flung it around already and lost it. I never saw a micro SD card. Good thing I bought one, huh? It's just one of them. I don't see one in, sitting in here either. So we'll put this in there. And and you know, it's like that. This has several fun key things. You got micro SD slot here, micro SD slot there. You got two uh two micro HDMI cables. Can be connected so you can put up two monitors on it. And you got this slot here, which is the C. It's a power, basically. And then you have a your Type A, two Type A's. One one's a Type Three, one's a Type Two Type A. Uh, USB ports. Uh, oh no, these are two. These are two Type Threes. This is type two. Yeah. But well, it has a white one in there instead of a blue one. You have your Ethernet cable connection. 
Although it does have Wi-Fi on it too, so you can connect up that way, which we're gonna have to do because my router's in the other room. And I'm not sure what this is here. It's a hole in there. So anyway, we got those things, and we have this port here, which is it's a spot where you can. Let me open this up. Yeah, see this long black thing? It's a spot where you connect in other things. It's uh, for programming purposes. If you prove we do programming, you can connect that on there. Anyway, you're supposed to be able to move that. I don't know how to do that yet, so. I have to figure that part out. Probably just pop it off somehow, but anyway. We'll move on because that's interesting. Now all the connections are on the back of it. So we need to, it didn't come with any cables or nothing like that, at least this version is 107 bucks, so what do you expect for 107 Here's my HDMI cable I'm going to use with the micro end on it and the regular end on it. It's supposed to have this little swing where you can turn it on and off through this thing here. Okay, so there's where you plug in the power on this side. And this you plug into obviously to your your type c on the back of the little keyboard like that and that upside right side up like that so then i have this like this okay very good anyway it has a button over here on off that you push Turn it on and off. So you don't have to, you can have it plugged in without having to have it on. Here's a power, regular power supply. Type C connector on the end of it. Bought this all with my own money. Nobody gave me anything. They have no clue that I'm even doing this. So it's not a product. I didn't get anything for this or nothing. No freebies for me. I'm not that big of a channel yet. <laughs> Get freebies for stuff like this. So then this plugs into this. And like this. Snapped in there. And I have it set up like this. And now if I plug this into the wall outlet. And now all I do is press fires to press this. See, it's got a red light on it indicating that it's got power to it, but it's not going through yet. Or maybe it is. There it is. It's off now. And now it's off on power. And I'll set this down over here for the time being until I get the HDMI cable connected. Up to. Okay. Now we should be ready to boot up in the system. HMI, I'll get my camera over here. Here's where we're going to plug it in at, start it up. I'm going to put this over here so you maybe you can look at it that way. It's a little bit of an angle, but maybe hopefully it'll come across good. Okay, I'm going to turn on the Pi and see what happens. Da -da 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 -da. Hey, it lit up. Hey, it's booting in the system. Cool. It says, hey, I've got power. I've got the power. So this is my first Pi, this is MS Linux Power, Pi, Power, Arm, for it. I have no idea exactly what's going to lie. Now this has, does have the uh, Fluxbox window manager on it. I need to do some lookup. So anyway, I'll, I'll cut the video off here and then I'll come back when I figure this out and I'll 
show you what the final results on it, okay? Baylor has been sitting there for a long time processing. Nothing's happening as far as I can tell. I'm going to have to redo the card, I guess. Maybe with the, with the Raspberry Pi's uh, Imager. We'll try that out and see if we can get an OS on there that'll work. At least to start out with. Then we can play around with other OSs later on, I suppose. This seems to hit a snag. I don't know what happened, whether I screwed it up when I had it powered on and turned it off in the middle of the power process. I screwed up some of the Linux Linux, or maybe it has a any number of other things. It could be bad download. I don't think I don't remember if I checked the the hashtag on it or not. Downloaded it, but well, anyway, we'll download something different. So yeah, I'll do that so you can see what the process is, basically. For Linux, this is a Linux machine. That's all I use here, so no Windows for me. So anyway, we're going to turn this off. Then we're going to turn back over here to moi. There you should see it. It's this Raspberry Imager. Uh, Raspberry Pi Major. I have this now. My firmware doesn't have a SD card slot, but I do have this here little thing here, and it goes in like this. And then I can process it that way using a slot here, Type A slot, USB slot on here. Like turns see what I'm doing, and there we go. Now I think you have to like, I don't know if this formats it for you or so, I think you want to start with the formatted card. I probably need to do that first. Let me see. We'll start up deep partition here. He parted. He wants to... Uh, Process that there. Okay, that is the one we want. No system there. So I think it should be this card here. I think this is my other card. It's a one terabyte too, so it's kind of hard to know for sure, but I'm pretty sure if you plug that in that second, then it's not the B, it's a C. So we have a C card, and it has the XEXT4 bat. Yep, 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 this is it. This is a yeah, space, I never said that space, it was, it was recorded on the, I did the disk imager. Basically use disk image uh, to, to put the image over on this thing here you have to use this different thing so we're gonna erase all this stuff yeah it's not, I mean, it doesn't have any data in it so it's okay to erase it so we're gonna go here and delete this thing out delete delete and lead out the EFIers. Okay. Now we're going to create a G parted partition table. Oh, we can't. Uh, okay, so apply. And apply all those, those actions. Apply. It's going to erase all the delete all those petitions. We have a blank disk on our hands. Okay, close that. Now we're going to create a petition on it. Table. And just to make sure we can do this good. We're going to go with this petition table. The 
It's fine. Can we create a petition on it? No. And we want to create one petition that covers the whole disk and the label. Let's just leave it blank for now. XT4 add. So that's good. Apply. And format to is for and apply. Petition which covers the majority of the disk, except for a few megabytes there toward the end, which it felt it needed to hang on to or whatever. And it is done. Yay. Okay, so yeah, we got this one petition here. It's all formatted, and it's majority of the disk, so it's all but one megabyte is free. So now, didn't have that set and ready to roll for this thing. So choose OS is the first thing you have to do now. That set OS's, you can get the Raspberry Pi uh, based images. Or you can just pick this one here, Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit. Well, ours is 32 bit and 64 bit, I think. Raspberry Bullseye with no desktop environment. This is a port of a Raspberry and Bullseye with desktop environment and recommended applications. 0.2 gigabytes. Raspberry Pi OS. Quarter blend bullet with Raspberry Pi desktop. And Raspberry Pi 34400. That's like. That's point seven download. Here's a sixty four bit with no desktop environment. Legacy. Well, I think maybe this is what we need probably here. So we choose that now we need to choose our storage. Should be yeah, it should be this one right here, generic mass storage. Not this one, which is my other one. Not a media rig backup. This one is not at all, so that's what we need. And then when you click right. Yes. And password. And it's writing to the disk. The worst thing that happens is uh, if I wrote it to the wrong disk, in this case, uh, the other one's my backup disk. I have to re backup my disk. If it, if it wrote it on the wrong disk, but I'm pretty sure because it's flashing over here on the USB stick that I put plugged in. So we got the right one for sure. Here we're almost done. It's verifying, finalized. You're your master, you never know, see SD card from the reader. Cool. Yeah, first it did to copy the image onto the onto the flash drive. Then it verified it, and after it verified it, it was done. So there we go. Now we got this card. Go back to head. Got. And so you see what's going on. There we go. And there's the SD card. Drink. Our crash SD card, we just wrote an image on. See what happens when we plug it and see if it cooks this time. Fingers crossed. That's about it I'm going to get, I think. So you got that, now we'll power it on and see what happens.
I have turned the screen on. Oh, there it goes. And... Besides root process. Let's see what I had on there. This is what it said new. As coming along, to me any more stuff on it? Looks more like normal stuff there, doesn't it? Yay. Let's do. Okay. Got a desktop environment on it. I don't know what kind. How much one? I know what it was in. Oh, here we are. English Slack keyboard. Yes. We have English. Yep, yep, yep. Well, UK. I need to go down to US. Yeah, I go to other for that, apparently. It's US, oh. Right there. No, no Esperanto. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if any country actually or people actually use that much. I don't know if people use it for... I actually study that a bit. Then we gotta go up to the top there where it's an English US. In there. Default US, yeah. Please enter username. Rick. Really, it's doing something. That's just something to a thing. Kick it in. Yeah, there you go. So, system options and figures, system setting, display frame options, view display setting, page option. Oh, yes, yeah, set it up. Update. Advanced options. Localization options, performance options, interface options, option system options. Let's see what system we have here. Go down the line until we got wireless LAN, interest time, passphrase. Okay. Audio, password. It's something about setting the country. I already did that though. Well. We gotta set this, don't we? Oh, there's a country. Select country in which pie is to be used. United States. Okay. Enter Sid. Apple fan. Apple fan. Apple fan, yeah. Okay. Please enter passphrase. Leave it to the That's phrase. All right. System option. We're back at the main setting thing, are we?
Command say we do an update and see if that's that. Then we get back to these things, especially system settings. I'll update this tool, not system. I guess we'll finish. Yes. It's rebooting, and then it should reboot us into system, hopefully. Your fingers crossed. And I'm sorry you can't really read that very clearly on the screen, just side panel like that, but. We can just look in here. And maybe we'll hopefully get going. Rebooting. Alrighty. And. There's rebooting up again. Didn't ask me the same questions again, I don't think. Okay, that's another test for me to do. Apparently. Last Raspberry Pi. Okay, I thought this had a desktop entry. I'll select one on the desktop. Let's see what happens when you hit start X. See if that does. Okay, Command I found. Huh. Okay. Okay, do sudo app get install IDM to allow configuration of boot to desktop. So it doesn't even have a one, it doesn't even have a DM installed at all, Display Manager. We have to install our own. We have to install Light DM. Okay. Okay, so. Okay. Finish. No. And we're back down here. We're going to do sudo apt install light display manager. Right. I read it. Call me. Alrighty. Now we go back to configuration. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's it. Good work. Yes, I want to reboot. We'll see what we got. Yeehaw. Reboot, reboot, reboot. And here she flies. And do we have lift off yet? Now we have a mouse. Yay! We have a light DM. Maybe let's see what kind of desktop we have on here now.
Uh oh. And this problem. Well, I have to shut this down, stop recording, I'll come back and I'll, when I'm done figuring this out. See what I did. Alright, I'm back. And basically what I had to do is I had to go and install the desktop once I got to the console. Figured out how to do that. Got to the console. Then I ran Tassel, which is a Debian based program that installs the flat desktops on your system. Called XFCE. And then I was able to log into it and log into XFC. So I'll do that now for you. And there's XFC desktop. I won't go through because I'm not really here to review this, but I will low into the terminal part of it. Run H top and it's got four gigs of memory in it and 457 megabytes out of it. First run memory, I had uh, 300 and some odd megabytes. Not too bad, not too shabby for memory usage, especially four gigs of RAM should run fine, I think. You didn't install. I tried installing uh, OBS on here, but it wouldn't run because it didn't have the right uh, updated drivers and graphic card for it. Okay, that's not going to work, apparently. So I can't do this. You just have to look at it on the screen and see what happens. All right, now let's look more directly at it. So you can see more what we got. Okay, there you see. We have Debian Bullseye on it. And sorry for the shakiness, but my hands are not very solid. That's better. It's got a 5.15.32 kernel in it. And Raspberry Pi 400 revision, revision 1. And it's got 1420 packages in it. This is a good bit, but not too bad. Bash 5.1.4. 19 by 28, 1080. XFC 4.16. And we have the so okay, Carlos says we have a CPU BCM two eight three five four threads running at one point eight gigahertz. So that's about what you got there, and then you have memory portion of about four hundred some odd megabytes out of four gigs of memory. Yeah. What was I want to look at on here? I was wanting to see what kind of CPU it had, that kind of thing. Curious about that. And yeah, it's pretty nice. So yeah, I just have to turn it up how I want it. That kind of thing. So that's what I got. I'll we'll turn it back to me. So anyway, that's what we got going. Hey, I'm, how come I'm delayed? Hopefully it's not coming across that way in the screen. Well, so I'll call that a successful install. And Raspberry Pi cooking. So, until next time, we'll see you again.
May your light source be with you. Bye.